response to uh, Medicare and to Medicaid because so many seniors are now uh, using Medicaid for institutional care. So it, uh, as one story said recently, I think it's Forbes is going to bankrupt the country. So and, and their point is pretty simple. Um, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of, no, what is it? A cure? So. Today, today in Washington, D.C., the sky is blue and the weather is warm. But there have been many dark and difficult days during the pandemic. A mission and a mandate to say something, to do something, not just for ourselves, but for our mothers and our fathers, our grandparents and great grandparents, for our sisters and our brothers, for our nation. The Latino, the Asian American, a Native American, we are one people, we are one family, we all live in the same house, the American house, the world house. only to herself, our Capital Award for Public Service Honoree, Ana Navarro. I just wish we were at the steps of a meeting at the old executive office building. I was like, who is this young kid who's like connected to all these members of Congress and so fearless? Oh my God, she was doing things that, you know, 70 year old experienced veterans of Capitol Hill wouldn't be doing. I think the best thing Republicans could do is uh, come up with an agreement and get rid of the issue once and for all. Get it off the table so we don't have this constant fight that we have to be defending with Latinos. And we can go back to what Ronald Reagan did. Latinos are Republicans, they just don't know it yet. <laughs> don't let Anna's epic sense of humor fool <laughs> emotional and very, very humble. Thank you so much to the NCLR board, to my sister friend, Janet Murguia, Renata Soto. Janet um, asked me who I wanted to make the presentation. Well, I asked her for Warren Beatty. <laughs> he was in La La Land. Let me say, this room, man, this room is filled with some really good-looking other people's babies. <laughs> and I gotta say, the bad hombres are looking particularly attractive tonight. We can be loser. So I didn't submit my remarks to be input into the teleprompter. First, because I want to give Janet some deniability. And second, because I was afraid the Russians might hack my teleprompter and I might end up saying some good things about Donald Trump. <laughs> okay, folks. They gave me 10 minutes and I got a lot of stuff to get through. So let's get going. And if you're a Trump supporter, believe me, this is a good time for a cigarette break. <laughs> this is just too serious. I don't have time to waste sugarcoating or mincing words. This is obvious. As my mother would say, no estamos para cafetales. For my 25 Cuban American friends in the room who may have voted for Trump because he pretended to be for the embargo, I promise I'll make it up to you by saying good things about Alex Acosta and bashing Raul Castro. And don't worry, I would never compare Trump to a dictatorial strongman who tramples on democratic values. <laughs> Castro and Trump are very, very different. One of them kills his opponents, the other one tweets at them. <laughs> and if that one Mexican guy who was on TV with me, you know the Mexican-American guy who's adverse to tackle trucks is in the room, well, mijo, I got nothing for you because I'm not about to start getting into a fight with enchiladas. <laughs> Before I, I continue, I was in Iowa last night giving a speech, and two things happened. One was that this nice Iowa woman came up to me and gave me this as a gift. She asked me to share it with all of you tonight. 
And the second thing was that there was this sign language interpreter during my speech, and I learned the sign for Trump. And <laughs> pass a political litmus test, I think it's rather stupid to require political agreement as a basis of friendship. But this political cycle has brought out something in people, and it goes both ways, left and right, or it's the right of people to make their own choices and exercise their right to vote. I urge you not to question people's motives or patriotism, and don't take away their Latino card just because of who they voted for or who they support. Churches is deplorable. Detaining and deporting free masses is the community is a target. Every single one of us is a target. Every single one of us is a target. It's poor American values of unity and equality and fairness and basic decency are under attack. I exercise my freedom of speech to take on the president of the country I live on in. That would get me beaten, jailed, and their Fourth Amendment rights or to self-incriminate, which is their Fifth Amendment rights, even if they are not citizens. The strength of this country, my friends, isn't in one house down the street. It's in our house, where we live. <laughs> Well, I'm sorry, what did you tell this tale? Oh, <laughs> 